Greetings. Welcome to another broadcast of I Have a Testimony. I'm your host, Brother Willie Muhammad. God came to us to seek and to save that which was lost. He raised a man from among us. He, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, laid the foundation. What I'm doing is something that comes from him through me and the thing that he uses in me to do the work is my faith in him and the word that he taught to produce men and women who wanted to clean up their life and build an independent nation for the glory of God. Today, brothers and sisters, we have with us one of the great helpers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He currently serves as a student regional minister of the Western region of the Nation of Islam. His work and influence in the nation's Western regional headquarters spans to community, street organizations, entertainers, spiritual and political, and even in educational circles. It's our brother, Brother Abdul Saeed, Ad Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. Let us thank him for our modern leaders. Let us thank him for those who God sent to us as a sign of his anger. Thank you. Let us thank him for Nat Turner. Oh, we need a Nat Turner today. Let us thank him for Malcolm X. Let us thank him for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Martin Luther King. Let us thank him for those leaders, those that we have listened to and those that we have closed our eyes to. It is an honor for me today, every generation, every people who have ever suffered, God has always given the people of leader, but the problem with a slave as that he is so much in love with his slave master yes, sir. that when God sends him a leader because the slave master don't like him, yes, sir. the slaves shun him. Yes, Y'all all right? Yes. I thank God for giving me and us a leader, one who's non-compromising, one who you're not going to see on CNN. Yes, you're not going to see him on CB Max. Yes, sir. You're not going to see him on ABC. Yes, that man is one of the most uncompromising men that I know, and I pray that I can represent his spirit to you today. That man is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> I sound like him, dear brother, and thank you for accepting uh, this invitation. Wow. Brother Willie, it's, it's an honor, you know, to even come on to your show, mm. to even say anything. And to be here with you, my dear brother and friend, it's an honor and a pleasure. Oh, praise is due to Allah, man. So we're going to get straight, straight to it. Because when you visit the city here, we were doing this, I have a testimony, but not in this format. And you gave your testimony to the uh, believers here at the mosque. It was very powerful. So we'll say this. So can we begin by uh, having you share with the viewing audience how you first heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and eventually made the decision to become a member? Wow, well, yeah. Well, there's a, a few things that happened in my life. And I want to just start with in my childhood, in 1965, 1966, I was around seven or eight years old. And this was during the civil rights movement. And I used to sit in front of the TV and watch the news story and seeing, you know, the police officers and firemen spraying water holes on our people and sicking dogs. And I used to sit in front of the TV and I used to make a declaration then that I'm going to do something to stop this. I'm going to help black people. So it started there. And as I gotten older, I used to see the Muslims out selling the uh, Muhammad Speaks. I always was intrigued, but I was afraid of them. And then when I got in college, in college I met brothers and sisters from New York, from DC, who was in the nation of Islam or whose parents was in the nation. So I'm always, I was always close and in and around Muslims. So when I played sports in college, I was pretty good athlete. I always wanted to make a lot of money to help my mother. 
And so when I didn't make it into pro sports, after graduating from college, I worked for Eastern Airlines. And while I was at Eastern Airlines, um, you know, I used to, me and a team of others, we used to go through suitcases and we used to steal the cocaine that others were shipping from Central and South America into Miami or New York. And we would steal it. And I would make a lot of money. I was making a lot of money selling drugs. And there was this Muslim brother in the nation who worked at Eastern Airlines. And I was always into trouble, always arguing with the whites who worked there. And he would come to me and say, you know, brother, you need to know more about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I'm like, OK, Brother Oliver, because everyone knew him as Brother Oliver. And I would push away from him. And then one day I walked over to him as he was we thought he was reading the newspaper, but he had the message to the black man um, in uh, covering his message to the black man. And I'm like, brother, what are you reading? He said, brother, this is a book from the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a message to the black man. I said, that's interesting. He said, I got an extra copy. You want one? I said, yes. And he gave me a copy. And when I opened it up and I'm beginning to read and I read a part where the white man was the devil, I was like, ooh, OK, this is a little heavy. <laughs> and I got rid of it. And every day from that time, this brother would come to me and say, you'll make a good one. He said, take this tape. And he would give me certain tapes trying to introduce me. Now he, he was like a mentor and I really was impressed with this brother, but I was selling drugs. And I knew that the Muslims, you know, didn't like that or stayed away from drugs or always trying to reform drug dealers. So that brother was the first great impression I had of the nation of Islam. But now, about a year or so later, I'm at my apartment, I'm measuring drugs to give to some of my lieutenants. And one of the brothers who worked for me came to my apartment and he had a videotape. And I really, Brother Oliver was trying to tell me about Minister Farrakhan, but I just wasn't listening. So the brother who came to my apartment, he said, man, I got this videotape. Have you ever heard of Louis Farrakhan? I'm like, man, has he ever heard of me? You know, I'm arrogant, I'm a dope dealer, I'm making money. He said, you gotta hear this tape, man, this dude is powerful. And he asked me if he could put it on. I said, go right ahead. And he put the tape in. And when he put the tape in, Brother Willie, it was a subject titled, Power at Last Forever. And when they introduced the minister, it was in Los Angeles. And I'm like, wow, this black man speaking in front of all these people. He said, yeah, man, this is Farrakhan. So when the minister took the microphone, it was his spirit. It was the cadence from his voice. And he was lecturing. And he went into the lecture about the history of who the black man is and how we are from God and we are akin to God. It's like, this is what I've been wanting to hear. I've been wanting someone to teach me about who and what I am. And as the minister was going and teaching, he then started saying, and you dope dealers. He said, I'm not angry that you have the spirit to be an entrepreneur. I have a problem with your product because in your ignorance, the enemy will use you as a Patriot missile. Brother, that hit me like a ton of bricks. Then I start remembering as a child, I wanted to help black people. Now here I am with drugs hurting black people. And I rock back in my seat. I'm like, man, this man is deep. And so the brother who brought the tape said, I told you, man, it's Farrakhan. I said, shut up, brother. I'm trying to hear him, not you. <laughs> And Brother Willie, as the minister was teaching, tears was running down my face. And I made up my mind at that time. I said, this is the man that the brother at my job was trying to tell me about. 
His name was Brother Oliver. And I said at the end, when it went off, I took all of the drugs off of my table, went into the bathroom and flushed it down the toilet. And the brother who brought the tape said, wait a minute, man, if I had known you was gonna do this, I wouldn't have never brought this tape. I said, well, brother, you did. And I, I put my gun in my hand. I said, all oh, y'all get out of my house. I'm going to join the nation. And I got uh -huh. back with the brother at work. I said, brother, I want you to take me to the mosque. I'm ready. Wow. And that Sunday, I went to the mosque and joined the nation. <laughs> Beautiful, man. And it's, it's, it's interesting. You are the you 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 are you are the the region the Western Regional Minister in Los Angeles, and it was that lecture of him being in Los Angeles. You know, so nine also, years later, nine, nine years, later, years later, I was wow. sent to LA to be the minister. Well, we have five more five more minutes before we come up to this next break. But let me ask you this question: We're going to try to get them all in. You know, you you talk often about how your journey in Islam has not been a smooth one, and how in your formative years of the nation, you were expelled from the mosque not once but nine times, right? Yes. You know, you know, we can bear witness that some people get one negative experience and they leave the mosque. My question to you is, looking back at that experience, what allowed you to go through those experiences, those nine like being put out, but it did, did not extinguish your faith? Because all my life I was seeking a father and I was seeking Jesus. I was seeking God and through the minister, I found what I was seeking. And as a result of pledging in college, I pledged a fraternity called Omega Psi Phi. And they always said they're going to make you quit, make you drop, mm. even from a child. When, some, when I'm determined to do something and someone is trying to stop me, I get more motivated. And so it was that motivation. I, I took myself back to a pledge-like state. And I said, none of you brothers will be able to run me away from that man, meaning Minister Farrakhan. I said, that's the man. I, I don't care what I got to go through to prove that I'm with him. None of you would ever stop me from helping Louis Farrakhan. Wow. Wow. And I'll ask you this question before we go into our break. You know, when I first met you and know of you, Tony, brother Tony Muhammad, but you're one of those who've been blessed to be bestowed a holy name by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Just like through all your years to, to, and now to to be awarded that 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 blessing how does it feel oh my god it was it was so surreal because the way it happened you know and for years the minister was telling me brother i got a name for you but it's got to be a big name mm. and i mean for years he would see me i, I haven't forgot i got a name and it was right after the nipsey hustle incident and the minister came to Los Angeles and he was so moved by the display of love that we showed toward Nipsey Hussle, a young man that I was mentoring. And he was so moved about how we handled the streets and kept riots from breaking out as a result of his murder. And the minister came to Los Angeles because Nipsey family wanted him. And when he saw how the people responded to us in the streets, we were in his hotel room and he gave everybody a name. All the ministers got a name. I didn't get one that morning. And it was that evening. He said, no, brother. We were sitting listening to his music with some music moguls. And all of a sudden he hit the table and stopped the music. He said, Allah, just drop your name in my head. He said, your name is no longer Tony Muhammad. It's now Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. And he said, not Malik so much the king. He said, but you are the Malik in the prayer. Maliki Omadi, meaning one who uses the law of recompense to settle differences. He said, you've been settling differences, brother, all of your life from even a child. And of course, Abdul means a servant of God, a servant of the people. Then he said, you go look up Saeed and let me know if you like that name. And when I looked up Saeed, it scared the heck out of me, Brother Willie. So I, I looked at it and then he said, brother, do you like it? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, well, what does it mean? I said, well, it means one whom the people put their trust in. He said, brother, why are you giving me the weak meaning? He said, 
what's the first meaning? I said, well, it says Lord. He said, well, who do you think a Lord is? Lord is one whom God allows to place sovereignty and trust in the man in whom is standing in front of them. He said, so you're over a whole territory. He said, if the white man over in Great Britain can call himself Lord and he's a devil, <laughs> he said, so you are Saeed, do you like it? I said, brother minister, it's gonna take some time for me to grow into that understanding. And he said, yeah, brother, I understand, you know, you'll, you'll grow into the meeting. And he, and we went on to doing whatever we was doing. So I, I cried for days, brother Willie, mm. because it's like when you are bestowed, an attribute of God, yet you also know your weaknesses and your idiosyncrasies. It's a fearful thing because you mm. don't you don't want to mess up in that name. You know? mm. So wow. I was happy, but I was afraid. <laughs> yes, sir. All praise due to Allah, man. Thank you for for sharing that because this is it's beautiful. And I can't wait to I know as audience members see this blown away. So we're coming up on our, our first break, brothers and sisters, and we'll be back with our brother Abdul. Malik Saeed Muhammad. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps us to highlight solutions for a brighter tomorrow. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate. you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. The hashtag bank black social media campaign made strides not only in revolutionizing how we bank, but also how we think. The movement inspired thousands of African-Americans across the country to transfer or deposit millions of dollars into black owned banks. These are banks that will invest in urban communities, employ African-Americans, support black businesses and inspire black home ownership. This is a very proud moment for our culture as we are taking small but significant steps towards building Black power through Black wealth. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Follow us on social media at NMV News and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at National Network View. I am Anissa Muhammad with NNVNews.com. And we're back, brothers and sisters. Thank you all for joining us for part two for the second half of this, this interview. So we'll go to this question, my brother. You know, I was present during the labor's meeting and I saw uh, doing a stream and doing a lecture where you gave a very transparent testimony about your journey of self-improvement. Even when you were here in the city of New Orleans you, from the rostrum you did. And, and from my opinion, that's not, a, that's not common in our nation. You know, everybody doesn't have that level of, uh, I guess, trust, uh, just even it willing to be that open, right? What made you do so? And what did you hope to achieve by doing that? Well, you know, once you go to Almighty God, Allah, and you confess, truly, truly empty yourself and confess your faults or your sins. And when you feel and know that Allah has taken your sins and thrown them in the sea of forgetfulness. Now it's easier for me to open up my chest to others. And I think I'm motivated, I was motivated because 
Sometimes a lot of us can be self-righteous as if we don't sin or if we don't have any weaknesses. And I thought that if I opened myself up to say, you know, hey, I've been weak as a member in the nation of Islam, but Allah blessed me to get that off of me and bless me in some self-correction, some self-improvement, you know? And I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan once say, which gave me the confidence. He said, brother, if I can open myself up and open my chest up so that you can see that I have not been perfect, it should make it easier for you. So he was my example, you see? And so to me, seeing and holding on to it and not, confessing because we in our prayers we say i confess my faults but we normally don't and again we don't have to confess it to an individual but we don't even go specifically with our sins to allah sometimes we don't tell him specifically we just say oh allah forgive me my sins well which ones and so dear brother i fail on my post and i but allah bless me to get up he blessed me with self-correction he blessed me to go before the minister and, to, and I talked to him about what I had done. And when I finished, he just took his hand and wiped, said, brother, you done. Now that you're finished vomiting on my table, you go back and get on your post. You ready now, brother. See, because once it's off me and I tell you about a mistake that I made or a sin, you can't hurt me with it by throwing it in my face. It's off of me now. See, and so I felt so good. And when I would do those testimonies, Brother Willie, and be honest with the people, it made them embrace me more to say, wow, you are minister in the nation of Islam and you admit it to some indiscretions. You admit it to doing things that you had stopped doing, but you did it again. Look at you now. So it can hurt you. And I, I just felt good doing it. And it helped so many people. I hate phony. You know, and I learned that from the streets. They hate phony, fake people. See, how can I help people and ain't never been through anything or been through nothing? And so not only talking about it to members in the nation and our community, not only was it healing for them, but every time I express it, I feel stronger and stronger and more away from that kind of transgression. So I'm just that type of brother. I love being a real brother to the community and to the believers. Praise be to Allah, man. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. And, you know, man, just beautiful. And, and that bears witness to what the scripture says by the, by the power, by the blood of the lamb and the power of their testimony was able to defeat the dragon. And yes. thank you for being transparent like that. You know, mm -hmm. while preparing for this interview, I came across numerous articles which spoke about your work with street organizations in, in Los Angeles. And many of them talked about your ability to help those who were at odds with each other to squash their beefs, right? So from yeah. your experience, what would you say, what did you say is the key to getting these street organizations who have harmed each other in the past and taken the lives of, of friends, family members, brothers, whatever, to get them to squash the beefs? Number one, uh, dear brother, you have to have a love for the streets, 10 times more than the hate that they have for each other, then they have to trust you. You have to prove that you are even worthy of them even lending you their ear because the streets don't trust. It's like the scriptures say, all that came before me was robbers and thieves. And many of them have a negative opinion of religious leaders. And so it, it took me a while to win the streets, Brother Willie. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, even sometimes taking the brothers with me as security was a problem. Because I'm trying to talk to some of the gang members and the security got this bravado look, they think they're warriors and soldiers and then they can't listen to me by saying, why that brother looking at me like that? So I used to go by myself amongst the gangs, you know? I mean, I shouldn't have, but when I went among the rolling 60s in particular, and I rolled up on them there in the park, 
and they're playing dominoes. And I went and sat and talking to them while they're playing dominoes, it's a brother. Where's your security? You know, where are the brothers? I said, I'm with my brothers. Aren't you my brothers? I said, brother, I didn't want to bring them. I just came to get to know you. I want you all to get to know me. Ask me anything, brother. I don't care if you're mad at the nation. Ask me anything. And that's how I started. And it worked so well with that group. And everything they was asking, I was answering their questions. I was being honest. And the brother said, man, we respect you, man. You can't buy yourself, dude. We respect you. Then I was leaving to get in my car. One of the brothers said, man, why you didn't ask us to come to the mosque? I said, because when you learn the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you are in the mosque. We own the whole planet. And I said, the mosque is for a special kind of warrior, brother, a special kind of soldier. Y'all ain't there yet. You generals. See, so what am I doing? I'm telling them what they can't have because I know in the nature of the black man, he don't like to be told what he can't do. And a couple of weeks later, that group showed up with 20, 30 brothers just to prove to me that they, they were not afraid to come to the mosque. And I started doing that, Brother Willie, in every hood. I, I probably visited by myself 150 or more gangs. And each gang, when I did that, had a deep respect for me because I didn't come with security. After a while, I stopped doing that. But I wanted the brothers to know that I love them. And then lastly, this is the one. Me and a couple of brothers, when the rolling 60s, the gang that Nipsey Hussle was from, there was a murder. And I went to the scene and that it was a prayer vigil. And some brothers and I, the police almost ran over some of the people at the prayer vigil. And when I confronted the police, there was an altercation between me, the FOI and the police where we took their weapons and we got arrested. And while they, to make a long story short, I got handcuffed. And while they took me to the ground, I cracked my teeth. They kicked me in the face. And brother, it was the gang members went crazy. It went over the radio that Minister Tony Muhammad at that time, he's been shot. They got him at the jail. And the community came with the Nation of Islam and thousands of people had surrounded the police station, threatening to burn the city down if they didn't let me out. And that incident, that incident went over the radio. And from that point on, I was trusted by many of the gang and many of the hoods, you know, and it was it was big, brother. Thank you for sharing that, my brother. Mm -hmm. And we have about the thing probably about four more minutes i want to add, get this question in in addition to the work that you to that work you're also working to better the relationship between law enforcement and the black and brown community and one of the efforts i saw you were involved in, in included hip-hop artists the game and the picture's going to come up can you share with us what was going on with this initiative oh yeah well this particular uh initiative uh, i was in florida and it was at the time when um, one of, that was a shooting. And I think it happened with George Floyd. No, it wasn't George Floyd. It was a brother in the Carolinas that was shot in the back by the police. Yeah. Walter Williams, I think. Walter Williams, that's right. Mm -hmm. and, and so when that happened, Snoop Dogg in the game was so upset that they wanted to kind of turn the games against the police. Mm -hmm. So I got a call from both of them telling me what they was gonna do. I said, no, sir, that's not what we're gonna do. And they were angry, well, what should we do? I said, we're gonna get on the phone with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and get some guidance. So I called the minister, he said, get a brother's my number. So I got the game and snoop on with the minister. Now I'm not on that call. I said, look, when y'all finish, call me back. <laughs> they called me back. I said, well, brother, what did he say? He said, man, the minister was deep. He was heavy. He said for us to call you back and you wouldn't know what to do. Wow. I said, okay, good. I said, brother, I'm getting ready to fly in. Here's what we're gonna do. I said, Snoop, I need you and the gang to go and go meet with the police. 
mm. meet with the chief and you tell him how you feel. I said, I'll be on the phone. You all can conference me in. I have the brothers in the nation. You take a number of shot callers and I want you to march down to the police station and demand the meeting with the chief of police. Mm -hmm. And he did it, him, him and the game did it. And that meeting was so powerful that Snoop and the game, I'm telling you, those brothers represented so beautifully like diplomats, even though they were still angry and they checked the police. And I was listening and guiding the meeting over speaker. Mm. And when, when the meeting was over, many, street organizations who wasn't a part of that meeting was upset and thought that maybe Snoop and went and sold them out. And I had to fly back to LA and I sent out a communications asking all the gangs to come and meet me and I'm gonna defend the game and Snoop. And brother, we had set the meeting up for 700 people. It was over 3000 that showed up. Wow, I remember that. And when that meeting was over, the gang members thanked the gang. They thanked Snoop, you know, mm. because they trusted me. Mm. And from that meeting, we established what is called in LA, the United Hood Nations, where twice a year, all the gangs come to a meeting with me, similar to the United Nations, but we call it United Hood Nations, mm. where everybody sits at a table with the name of their gang gang in front of them, rolling mm -hmm. 60, eight trade gangsters, East Coast Crips, Hoovers, everybody's name. And they have two or three representatives and we start making hood policies. Praise be to Allah. No more shooting at schools, no mm -hmm. more shooting at a park. And these brothers would sign the affidavit saying they will not engage in that kind of negative activity until today. Mm -hmm. That still exists and we still meet. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, man. We're coming up on our, yeah. our next break. Great interview, brother. Loving it, brother. Yeah, thank brother. you. Loving brother. it. So we're going to pause from us to hear some announcements from our sponsors, and we'll be back with this dynamic interview with our brother, brother Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps to combat false media. Cash App, NNV News. AsiaticMinds.com Online education Helping our children to discover their God-given skills, gifts, talents, and passion that will allow them to see their greatness as well as the greatness of our people and upon discovering that greatness infusing them with the desire to use it for the betterment of themselves, their families, our people, and the world. 2022 through 23 enrollment waiting list open now. Visit AsiaticMinds.com. Worldwide, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button. Or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final Call Radio. The official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Thank you for tuning in to NNV News. Please share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Follow us on social media at NNV News and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, National Network View. This is Clifton Muhammad with NNVNews.com.
And we're back, brothers and sisters, with this powerful testimony, an interview by our brother, brother Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. And since we're talking about the street organizations, you also helped to facilitate the meeting between the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and our brother, Tookie Williams, who was the co-founder of the Crip Street organization. Can you share with us what you were blessed to see during that interaction between Tookie and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Wow, Brother Willie, you're bringing up stuff I kind of forgot I did <laughs> or was involved in. Well, this meeting, uh, brother, was one of the most powerful meetings I've ever witnessed mm. where our leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, went to San Quentin. And this brother has been in solitary confinement in a cell by himself for years. Mm. And the way the minister handled everyone, I mean, the prison guards, the everyone he came in contact with, the way this man handles people, brother, is so divine. And I remember the minister waiting on them to bring a Tuki out and Tookie Williams was in handcuffs behind his back and the minister said, could you remove those please? And they removed them. And the tears in Tookie Williams' eyes, I mean, brother, we were snotting all over the place. And when him and the minister, just a hug, if the minister hadn't have done nothing else but just hug this brother and left, I mean, you could just feel the love in the room. It, permeated through your soul. Everyone was crying. Stan Tookie Williams said that everything he had hoped for in meeting the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he said, if they execute me tonight, I feel fulfilled. And listening, this dude, brother, intelligent. I mean, a born leader. And he he witnessed and realized I started something very negative, but he had a change in his heart because he was reading the Final Call newspaper. He was studying the minister, studying all kinds of teachings. And he wanted the minister to record him and take his voice back to the streets so that they could hear, I'm a change, uh, Tookie Williams. I don't no longer subscribe to what you all are doing. And he and the minister was conversing and building and the minister said, yes, brother, we will take your message back to the street. So we recorded a message from him to the streets of Los Angeles. And man, the way this brother laid it out, it was just magnificent. But when we, I saw he was so resolved and that if they didn't give him a stay of execution, this man made his peace. In my mind, this man took his shahada and I was just moved. And of course, you know, when the minister finished talking to Stan, he went and talked to all the inmates. And when he finished with them, he told them, you're not in a prison, you're in a university. Use your time wisely to self-improve. And then he talked about inmate um, relationship with the jailers and how that should be and how the jailers, how you should treat the brothers. Man, I'm telling you, this man is a master teacher. And it was so self-fulfilling. And the minister, you know, I took the tape and he said at the right time, we would play it. And the minister after that wrote a letter to Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was the governor at that time, asking him not to execute the brother, that he would be better suited now to undo some of the harm that he and others caused and use him to help black the black and the brown community to heal. But of course, that was to no avail. The minister did his funeral. And it was at his funeral where we played his words. And Brother Willie, you should have saw. I mean, it was hundreds on the inside, thousands on the outside. 
And when Stan, look, Stan Tookie Williams talked about the minister and his love and that you all should get involved with organizations like the Nation of Islam and others. And brother, a room full of Crips stood up and saluted the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and say, we with you. And his, I still have the recording and inshallah, I'm gonna send you a copy of his words. Yes, sir, we love it. Wow, man, so, so, so much brother, brother Malik. And I hope I know. down the line, if you thinking about writing a book, you definitely should. Let me get well, you know, in. the minister told me, brother, you got three books in you, if yeah, not man. more. Yeah, and man. I just told him I don't like to write. I don't, got you know, if somebody would talk to me, I'll do it. But mm, well, we, we, it's we hard got, for me to talk about oh, myself. We got to. You have to do it, my brother. You have to. So, you know, I want to ask this before we go. We have five minutes before this next break. Can you talk about? If you can just think about some examples of things that you have observed. Uh, you kind of talk gave some example, but just some more about either these characteristics or qualities of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, his love, his mercy, his charitable spirit, or anything, any moment that comes to your mind? Yeah, a couple of moments. I remember when there was the East Coast, West Coast beef, and I was played a role in bringing the West Coast artists to Chicago along with some of the East Coast artists. And I'm listening and watching the minister, how he listens, Brother Willie, to everyone. He sat there for hours and didn't say nothing. I'm, but I'm just saying it's hard to tell you about how, how a man listens. And maybe three hours went by when everyone was finished, Brother Willie the minister start talking and gave everybody back everything they said and fixed it. I was like, even Snoop was like, minister, you, you told us everything we said. How could you do that? And the minister said, I learned from my teacher, brother. It's a science to listening. And he said, this is what's wrong with most people. We want to talk and we don't wanna listen. He said, I could listen and I could hear and feel the pain. And Allah gave me what to give back to you all for healing. And it was, and then all of them, because I'm gonna tell you, I didn't think that these cats would agree. Every one of those rap artists in front of the minister settled their difference. I was blown away. And I never forgot that experience on how to now listen without talking, but make sure you listen because he gave them back everything they said. I said, this man's memory is uncanny. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, man. And uh, beautiful, I'm trying, what we're gonna do, I, I'm trying to see if we have any more, can we go, we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to the break. I'm trying to see if we have time here, let me know. We have two minutes. So let me ask you this quick question sure. in two minutes. You know, as you as you reflect on your journey, your ebbs and your flows in the nation of Islam, what's one of the most important lessons that you have learned that is that is that is continuing to help you today? Well, the biggest lesson for me is my faith and belief that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the Messiah. I knew it a long time ago. I wrote the minister when I first came in the nation after I heard him do a lecture called, um, oh wow, it was, it was a lecture he did where he was teaching on Jesus. I said, no, this is the Messiah. Mm. And I wrote him and said to him who I thought he was. He never answered back. And it was that brother Willie, it's faith and love for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because he showed me that he was in love with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I said, I don't care what I gotta go through. I wanna be for him what he was to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to be a helper. And that's what I hold on to today. And the reason why I asked that question because 
I want those who will see this video, this interview, whether they're in the nation or not in the nation, to to be to find something to be inspired to hold on, you know. And I thank you, brother, for yeah. what you what you shared, what you shared during this interview and what you're going to share in these last 15 minutes after we come back from this break. So we'll be right. right back, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps us to highlight solutions for a brighter tomorrow. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate. Individually, we are poor when you compare us with white society in America. We are poor. Collectively, we are richer than all the nations in the world with the exception of nine. That's power right there if we know how to prove it. We begin the process of building a great economic base. And at the same time, we are putting pressure where it really hurts. We don't have to argue with anybody. We just need to go around to these stores and to these massive industries in our country. Say, God sent us by here to say to you that you're not treating his children right. We come by here to ask you to make the first item on your agenda fair treatment where God's children are concerned. Now, if you are not prepared to do that, we do have an agenda that we must follow. And our agenda calls for withdrawing economic support from you. We mean business now, and we are determined to gain our rightful place in God's world. AsiaticMinds.com Online education, helping our children to discover their God-given skills, gifts, talents, and passion that will allow them to see their greatness as well as the greatness of our people and upon discovering that greatness infusing them with the desire to use it for the betterment of themselves their families our people and the world 2022 through 23 enrollment waiting list open now visit asiaticminds.com please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below Follow us on social media at NMV News, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at National Network View. I am Anissa Muhammad with NNVNews.com. Thank you all for tuning back in as we continue this dynamic interview with our brother, brother Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. And I want to ask you this, in addition to being well respected by members of the various street organizations in Los Angeles, you are also very well respected by the numerous celebrities, you know, who seek your participation in events and also as well for guidance. How has the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's example, you know, helped you in dealing with celebrities? Wow. Well, I watched him. And I remember when he first sent me to Los Angeles, he said, brother, don't let me catch you up in Hollywood. <laughs> he said, do not run after the stars, brother. He said, this is what the enemy called them. He said, the real stars are those who work in the mission of the resurrection of the God. It's why we wear it on our shoulders. He said, but don't you run around proud as if you're better than any of them. He said, win the streets. And when you win the streets, Hollywood will come. He said, don't want nothing from them. Just be their servant. Just be a brother. And that's what I've tried to do. And Allah God has blessed me to an extent to be respected in the streets. And I'm telling you, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's words were right. And as a result of that respect in the streets, I get a call 
from artists. And guess who the artists talk to? The streets. And so I have, Allah has used me to save at least four or five artists' lives from gang members who want to extort them. I've stopped one, by God's grace, entertainer from being put in the trunk of a car because he said my name, that he knew me. And the gangs made him call me. <laughs> And he ended up being right, and they ended up getting a little money from him, but they didn't take his life. And so that man's the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's guidance is like no other guidance. He has never steered me wrong. Everything he had told me to do, if I do it exactly, it comes out exactly like he said. And so I stayed away. Even now, he said, don't run in front of cameras. So I don't like cameras. I don't even like doing interviews. So I stayed away from cameras. I probably in my 27 years, I called me personally. I've been to other people's press conferences. I've only called two press conferences in my 26 years here in Los Angeles. So I stay away from cameras. I go do the work. See, he said, do the work, brother. Let your work speak for you. And then he said to me, uh, you know, uh, a tree is known by the fruit it bears, and a man and a woman is known by their works. So if you ain't got no works, why are you talking? So I went to work. I stayed in the streets. And as a result of that now, it's not many entertainers that don't come and seek certain advice or how they should move in and around Los Angeles. So I'm thankful to Allah that I followed the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's guidance. Be to Allah, man. Beautiful, my brother. And, and we were talking about more about your work that you've been doing there. Let's take a moment to share with us about the Peace Rides. Oh, my goodness. Well, the Peace Rides, you know, came as a result of, you know, a lot of murdering, of course, in Los Angeles. And one day I'm riding in my car and these black bikers just zoomed past my car, maybe 67 bikers. And I got an idea. I said, oh my God, because I know bikers are respected among the gangs. So I had an idea. At that time, Minister Farrakhan told us to come out of the mosque and we were, he had us to go to the streets. I mean, we never had to worry about that in LA because we was kind of already in the streets. But I had an idea. When I saw those black bikers, Brother Willie, it reminded me of Muhammad and the horsemen. So these bikes was like the modern day horse. So I wanted to engage the bikers as the FOI was walking through the neighborhoods with the bikers ride to, to create a pageantry. And so I went to a bikers club. One of my members who was a biker took me to one of the Harley Davidson's biker clubs. And I'm pitching to them. I mean, the place is packed because, you know, my reputation was reputation was pretty good. And a lot of them came out to hear what I had to say. I said, look, man, I need y'all's help. I would like for you all to ride for peace while the nation of Islam, we walk for peace. You all ride. Then I said, here's what I want you to do. I want to have a Harley and a sports bike right next to each other. And the brothers interrupt me and say, you can stop right there. So I'm like, uh oh, what? I said, brother, we will never ride our Harley next to a sports bike. I said, oh my God. I said, so y'all banging too? I said, let me tell you something, brother. I can't let you say no to me. Then I said, how many of you have lost a loved one to gang violence? 90% of them raised their hand. I said, so you mean to tell me you're going to let not wanting to ride next to a sports bike and a Harley together. This is what I'm saying we can do that could change the reality of some in the community. I said, I'll tell you what, I've never ridden a motorcycle in my life, never even had the spirit to want to ride. I said, if I learn to ride a Harley, would you all do it? The whole room starts saying, hell yeah. I said, okay, I'm going to learn to ride. They said, okay, come back in a month. I said, no. I'll be back in a week. And Brother Willie, 
I went out and I learned how to ride a Harley and a sports bike in one week. A week later, I drove to their clubhouse on a Harley. And brother, it was hundreds standing around and they was cheering, say he did it. And I left on a sports bike. And that's what brought the bikers to the peace ride. Yes, my brother, you you, <laughs> you have to you have to write a book. I'm gonna call you to got some, some show you some ways that you can at least we'll we'll talk about that offline. But man, brother, yeah, you you, you brother brother Abdul Malik Saeed, man, you are such a jewel to our nation, my brother. And I want to tell you that personally, and your, your spirit, man, and your just your example, my brother. You know, and I, I appreciate that and all that you do for the believers there on the West Coast and for our nation. I want to personally thank you before I ask this, this last question. And this sure. last question we have is, you know, if there's anything that you you may want, you wanted to share that maybe you couldn't have because I didn't ask the question, you know, um, here's your opportunity to do so. Well, I just wanted to just talk about, um, for me, it's hard for me to talk about myself, mm -hmm. but I just want your listening audience to just know that this man, this man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, take time out. When you look at this man, go read about Jesus. Then look at him again. Then go read about Jesus. Go look at who Jesus' enemies were. Go look at who turned on Jesus. Go look at the work that the Jesus did, you know, making the blind see, the deaf hear. And I'm not talking about physically blind. I'm not talking about physically deaf. I'm talking about mental and spiritually dead people. It's the state that we're in. He's a Muslim, but he is the most trusted black leader. The streets love him. And when the minister came to Los Angeles, they told him, brother, if anything happened to you, if you slip and hurt yourself, we going off on this enemy. And the minister said, yeah, brother, you the unseen army. I got a seen army and an unseen. So the love, and I thank him because he cultivated my love for myself and for black people. And this is what I love about this man, Farrakhan. He never tries to convert. He just represents God to you. And it's up to you to reach into the God of yourself and to say, I accept his truth. And, and so this is my testimony is I'm in love with a man that I know and I don't have time on your show. I can prove it in no limit of time. He is the Jesus of our time. There is no other leader like him. And this is why I'm ready to give my life for this man. And if need be, if we have to deal with some others to preserve his life, we will. And so I thank God that I am a member of the nation of Islam. And the nation of Islam, the teachings is perfect, but it has sick, imperfected people inside of the nation. So don't ever come into the nation reading the members as if they are the book. No, read the real books of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You'll find not nothing false, but if you read people, then you'll read the nation different. The people is not the nation. It's the teachings that the people lean on. That's the nation. And so this is what I would leave your audience with, man. And I, I just thank Allah. And I pray that God use me more to be more humble, mm. but use me in a way until all gang banging, until we all of us stop the killing. My work haven't even put a dent in the work that we got to do, Brother Willie to save our people. Beautiful, my brother. And thank you for, for blessing us with this opportunity to, to interview my brother and make sure you give the family the greetings and also the believers there the greetings tomorrow when you mount the rostrum. And man, may Allah continue to bless you in everything that you're doing. Thank you, brother Willie. Thank you. And everyone, once again, you should listen to, I have a testimony. No oh, praise is due to Allah. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to another broadcast of I Have a Testimony. I'm your brother, Brother Willie Muhammad. See you next week. Go home and study. See, many of you don't study your religion. Go ahead. And you think.
think you're going to attain something without study. But if you believe in something, you need to study it so you can become proficient in what you do. Now watch this. God came to us to seek and to save that which was lost. He raised a man from among us. He, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, laid the foundation. What I'm doing is something that comes from him through me and the thing that he uses in me to do the work is my faith in him and the word that he taught to produce men and women who wanted to clean up their life and build an independent nation for the glory of God.